Good evening, folks. Welcome to the prestigious NASA Climate Blog. They published an article a week ago about how it is impossible for the current magnetic excursion ongoing at Earth to be part of the climate story. It's aimed at not only debunking that, but the solar influence on climate and the seriousness of the magnetic excursion in general. When they say, some people, I want to be clear. I'm not aware of someone else discussing the magnetic field, excursion, solar forcing, and the major biosphere risks associated. Some people. How endearing. Their proposition is simple, that the science doesn't support those ideas. Shall we see how NASA did? Let's begin where they begin, debunking hypotheses I've never heard before. I don't know of anybody saying the movement of the poles is the cause of climate change. Then... They describe a full magnetic reversal, the long cron events, and they state that there was no evidence of associated climate change with those events. Except that's plainly false, including for the greatest extinction in Earth's history. Might need to brush up on the quaternary Pleistocene and older paleomagnetic science there, but then again, this is NASA's climate blog. We then get absurd numbers meant to make the modern excursion seem tame. They say we've lost 9% of the field in 200 years. The problem is that NASA called that number 10% in the year 2000. The European Space Agency updated that number in 2010 to 15%. And in 2014, they stated that the field was still weakening, the weakening was accelerating, and that we'd gone from losing 5% per century to 5% of the field lost per decade. Not exactly the same calm, nothing burger of a story. Then, another pitfall. The now-debunked idea that the strength of the modern magnetic field is some sort of comfort. An excellent debunking of that notion came just earlier this year, showing that the intercycle strength of the magnetic field is irrelevant to the timing. When it's time to flip, it's time to flip. Then, we finally get to magnetic excursions specifically, and as we enter the key topic, NASA cranks up the mistakes to match the importance, starting right away. Well, no. That was not the last geomagnetic excursion. While Lachamp is the most well-known and was the first excursion discovered, there are numerous others that have been seen, and there are even smaller ones like Helena Pauly not on this list. To see this lack of science awareness in a NASA article? Ouch. But it gets worse. Main point on excursions from them is that there is no evidence of climate change during those excursions, so it wouldn't be affecting the climate now. Well... Let's look back at this list. The Gothenburg event led into the Younger Dryas climate catastrophe. The Lake Mungo event lines up with the last glacial maximum and a Heinrich climate event. Mono Lake, another Heinrich event, and there's one at Lachamp as well. Not to mention that the most recent major literature on the subject specifically found climate to be the main driver of the Lachamp challenges to the biosphere. Another Heinrich event at Vostok. Toba was obviously catastrophic to the climate. Blake was a major event in the early last ice age. Once again, like the idea that Lachamp was the most recent, this notion that climate isn't tied to the excursions is lunacy and is directly contradicted by the peer-reviewed literature. But wait, it gets worse. They try to attack the physics of the idea and go completely off the rails. First, their idea that the upper currents in the atmosphere can't challenge the energy of the lower atmosphere. Not only is that energy being found to be greater by the month, basically by the publication, having long been underestimated, but who says these interactions are limited to the upper atmosphere? We're going to come back to that one in a moment, but going to go straight to number two. These electromagnetic changes and forcings can't affect the atmosphere, they say, because the atmosphere is not made of iron. Oh boy, NASA. May I remind you that oxygen is paramagnetic and attracts to magnets, Dust is electrostatic, which is why it can stay aloft. And water vapor is absolutely electrostatic and electrophilic. Water vapor is attracted to electric current. And those currents run from the top of the sky down through every pressure cell and integrate with the crust and mantle as well. Their article ends with a complete sham paragraph, claiming the sun doesn't affect the atmosphere, only the ionosphere and that they cannot reach down to the lower regions where weather and climate are found and fiddled with. Well, first of all, there's that global electric circuit, which does surge through the pressure cell columns during geomagnetic events and during the flux transfers of high-energy particles through the interplanetary magnetic field into the polar cusp. 
and there are hundreds of papers demonstrating not only forcing of the lower atmosphere, but rapid forcing. In fact, it is about 500 citations worth in our 300-page textbook. But let's forget the science they apparently don't know for a moment. I'll play devil's advocate and let them have it their way. Let's stick with the magnetic field and climate story familiar to the NASA climate blog. Something completely left out of the most recent IPCC report was the fact that half the Arctic warming, which is one-third of all global warming, is not due to CO2, but due to the loss of ozone at the polar region, which is 100% tied to the increased proton bombardment through that very same polar cusp, driven to higher extents now by Earth's weakening magnetic field. And let's go a step further and let them have their CO2 story. Devil's advocate sitting on my head at this point. It's still not evading the effect of Earth's magnetic excursion in terms of the mixing ratios of that CO2, which is a key factor in its global warming power, at least they say so. Perhaps the most egregious mistake is ignoring the well-studied influence of cosmic rays on the atmosphere in terms of both lightning and clouds. High-energy space particles play a significant role and take on an even greater position when the magnetic field of the planet is unable to block them as efficiently, as is the case during a magnetic excursion. Folks, this entire article was a shot at our paradigm, and it disgraces the NASA website with its outdated information, ignoring peer-reviewed science, ignoring science discovered and furthered by others at NASA, and does great disservice to the reality of the condition of our planet. At the bottom of that article, you can scroll down and find the people in charge of the blog and their publishing. You can click their names and they are the ones who need to hear about this video and the failures of this article. And for those who want to take it a step further, it's not just climate that gets scary during a geomagnetic excursion, but the radiation too. Major megafaunal extinctions and losses of species occurred during the last geomagnetic excursions and the field has barely begun to scratch the surface of their analyses. To those at the climate blog, Maybe you do well to read my letter. It is for the entire geophysical community, after all. And to answer a rhetorical question from one of your peers at Goddard, I have no idea what you were thinking with this. I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.